Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. From the book of Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, He who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be a radiant over the goodness of the Lord over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young woman rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us recite together the portion of Psalm 84 appointed for today. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts! My soul has the desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house and the swallow a nest, where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. A reading from Ephesians. 
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed upon us in the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men, and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt it down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's Gospel reading is the familiar reading appointed for Epiphany, which we technically celebrate on January 6th, the 12th day of Christmas. That's this coming Wednesday, and we don't normally have a service on Wednesday. But the Gospel reading is an option for us for today, and I chose to include it because I think that Epiphany is a feast to which we ought to pay much more attention. The story of the visit of the Magi is a drama in five acts. Act 1 describes Joseph's dream concerning the child. Act 2, the visit of the Magi and the actions of Herod. Act 3 describes Joseph's dream, warning him to flee to Egypt for safety. An ironic reversal. Act 4, the slaughter of the innocents by Herod. And Act 5 describes Joseph's return to Nazareth, again prompted by a dream. Joseph and his dreams play a large part in the story. But the Magi are the next players in importance. Herod, Herod is the other primary character in the drama. So who are the Magi? And 
why do they occupy so central a place in the story of Jesus' birth? Traditionally, one of three answers has been given about their identity. Number one, they were magicians and frauds who practiced the forbidden art of divination. Number two, they were a class of priests serving the rulers of Persia and had access to power and wielded the kinds of power appropriate to their roles. Or number three, they were astrologers who read the heavens and advised the rulers on their plans. And their occupation was quite precarious as they could pay a heavy price if their message was not to the rulers whom they served, like now, if the Magi were astrologers, their presence places the so-called Star of Bethlehem into a different light. The star has been thought to be the result of a supernova, a conjunction of the planets as we just experienced, or a comet. But it really needn't be any of these, because it wasn't ne necessarily an extraordinary celestial event but an ordinary star seen through the eyes, the extraordinary eyes, of the Magi. They had eyes to see, but Herod and his scribes didn't. The Magi journeyed straight to Jerusalem and went to Herod's court. Perhaps this wasn't their wisest decision, but once they visited Herod, they knew that they had made a serious mistake and did not return. In Jerusalem, the Magi experienced the fear induced by a tyrannical ruler. Historically, when Herod was frightened, people died. His paranoia led to more and more extreme actions as he tried to secure his throne from his perceived threats. It's been noted that the Magi were able to get to Jerusalem by following a star, but required some special revelation to augment the general revelation that had led them to Jerusalem. Here, they required the prophets to supplement their knowledge of the star. The scribes produced a reading of Micah chapter 5, verse 2. They pointed to Bethlehem of Judea, one of the smaller and less important clans and so the Magi had the prophetic word as well as the celestial event to guide them. When the Magi arrived at the house where Jesus was born, they brought their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Traditional Christian interpretation has read these gifts as foreshadowing the child's life. Gold is fitting for royalty, frankincense for priestly duties, and myrrh points to the kind of death which he would suffer. Even more important than the gifts, however, was their response to the child. They knelt down and paid him homage. So the Magi became believers, even though they were Gentiles from the East who practiced astrology an activity considered on the fringes and incompatible with God's purpose on earth by the Torah. Ironically, we would expect that the king of Jews, the religious leaders of the temple, and the scribes who had devoted their lives to studying Torah to have shown some interest in God's activities. And yet, they showed none. The scribes identified Micah 5-2 which points to a town just a few miles away. But they showed no interest in checking things out. They seemed unable to translate what they read into action. Once they answered Herod, they disappeared from the scene. They lived at the center of power and didn't care what happened at the margins. Their behavior and their attitudes contrasted sharply with the faith of the Magi. Clearly God was at work, not at the center of power, but on the margins. Not in Jerusalem, but in a small village 
that carried memories of a glorious past when David was anointed by Saul. The opening scenes of the Gospel of Matthew anticipate how Matthew's version of the Gospel will end. When Jesus is buried, the religious leaders urge Pilate to put a guard at the tomb, lest the imposter's resurrection be proclaimed. But just as the powers that be try and fail to prevent the child's birth, they fail to prevent the resurrection too. God's purposes here on earth cannot be prevented. God's purposes will prevail. What's remarkable about Epiphany in my eyes is that we're not being asked to give. The Magi may have given gifts, but what happened that day was them receiving the gift of Jesus into the world. They gave the gifts to the Christ child in response to the gift first given to them. God gave the gift, and the Magi were invited to respond with their own gifts and service. If we were in person today, at this point, I'd ask the ushers to pass around the offering plate and invite you to take out a gift from the plate. In the plate would be stars with various words written on them. Now, our congregation is filled with people who give freely of their time by baking, by cooking, by writing notes to others, by praying, by calling, and by stretching the church budget by giving what they can. We are good at being busy and doing for God. Today, I invite you to be still in the presence of God and to receive the gift from God. It might just be a simple star with a word written on it, but this gift is not because we've done anything. It is a gift out of God's abundant generosity. Now, because we aren't in person, what I'd like to do is to have you each create a star on a piece of paper or out of wood, whatever you're comfortable with. From there, I'd like each of you to go to a website and spin a random word wheel. That word will be your word of the year. Write that word on the star. And then do what you feel is right with that star. Some people hang it on their refrigerator. Other people put it on the door that they use the most so that when they leave the house, they can be reminded of the word. Still others put it on the bathroom mirror so they can remember it as they get ready each day. What do you do with the word, you might ask? It's up to you. It is your gift from God. Allow your word to speak to you. You might start by looking up the word in the dictionary so that you're clear on its meaning. We hear the word grace all the time, but what exactly does grace mean? A word that seemed unclear at the beginning may gain new meaning as the year goes on. You might contemplate how it works in your life. You might take it as a sign to work on this aspect of your life. The word I picked was service. And throughout the year, I will encourage each of you to share some thoughts, either briefly or at length, about your star gift. Then we can reflect on the God who continually encourages and strengthens God's people. Perhaps that's really the delight of star gifts. They are a, they are a gift that keeps on giving, even long after our season of Epiphany is over. Now, like any other gift, star gifts can be received with joy or they can be discarded and forgotten about. We need to be intentional about our response to our gift. Will your word on the star be stuffed into your pocket 
or jammed into the bottom of your purse, never to be thought of or considered again? Or will your word be considered an opportunity, a chance to reflect on how God speaks to God's people? What might we learn from just one word? What new ideas might evolve? What treasured wisdom might resurface? Those magi saw that star. They accepted that, and they gave in response to God's gift to them. What will you do with the gift that you've been given this year? I invite you to join your voice with Christians around the world who profess their faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate for the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God has blessed creation with a great variety of gifts and gathered all people into one family, so that in sharing, we might strengthen and be strengthened by one another. We gather into our hearts and minds the universe entrusted to us, remembering its needs before God and this congregation. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others, and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them, and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially those on our parish prayer list. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, we commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, I invite you to now offer aloud or silently within your hearts any petitions which you may wish for, which you may wish prayer for during this service.
Lord, in your mercy. Grant that these prayers, O God, may be enfleshed by our commitment not only to pray them, but to live them in your Son's name. Amen. The peace of the Christ child be always with you. I do welcome all of you here this morning. Thank you for joining us online. Just a few announcements which should sound somewhat familiar since we've said them several times now. Continue to remember the mint tree as you are shopping. We will take your donations at any point throughout the year. If you need to arrange a drop-off, please call the church office at 716-836-0220. There is no further update on our suspension of in-person services and worship gatherings at this time. Please do watch our website for further information on upcoming services. And finally, our annual meeting is scheduled for next Sunday, that's January 10th, at 10.30 a.m. Due to the suspension on in-person gatherings, we will be holding our annual meeting by Zoom. We'll be electing our vestry members and also passing a resolution to be able to have the meeting by Zoom instead of in-person. If you don't have a computer, please do find a Zoom buddy or plan to call into the annual meeting. It shouldn't last very long, but we do need to get this important business of the church taken care of in this new year. Details are in the Christmas letter or on the website, so please do look there. And thank you for all of you who are interacting with our page on Facebook. Continue to share those posts and comment as appropriate, and we'll get our name out there even further into the world. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living in truth, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much, that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, to the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and, rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour would come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup, we praise you, and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord, our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us, and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be a holy gift for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ, to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with Michael and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them, and give you glory 
through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God. And now, for those who are unable to be in a church this weekend, but are still interested in receiving communion, we pray together an act of spiritual communion. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. Since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May Almighty God, who led the Magi by the shining of a star to find the Christ, the light from light, lead you also in your pilgrimage to find the Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us live in Christ's light and love. Alleluia. Alleluia. <laughs>